Hi, today I am finally having the breast lift and augmentation surgery. Um, it's 8 a.m. right now and I will be in the OR approximately at noon. I have to be there at least at 11 a.m. Uh, obviously, no, not, no food or drink uh, after midnight. And you have to make sure that you have everything with you. The prescribed medications, something soft to eat, um, crackers as well in case you wake up uh, with nausea from the anesthesia. Although they will give you uh, some medication to help you with that. And, um, and the images uh, to make sure that the doctor will um, do his best to match um, whatever you are have there. Um, I am extremely excited about this. Um, uh, but the pre-op, I would like to talk about that a little bit with you before I am on my way to the clinic. The pre-op, I advise you to write all the questions you might have about the procedure, about what things are going to be um, performed on that day, what type of implants would you be receiving, um, it is important that you leave the, um, the office with all the questions answered. I wanted to share with you some of the questions I had during my pre-op appointment. The first one is what type of gel implants would I be receiving? Whether gel implants, uh, ones that are called uh, gummy bears or memory gel implants. The second was is there a potential to develop stretch marks. I was really concerned about that. Um, as per my doctor, he said that is a very uh, rare situation where you can develop stretch mark. So he said not to worry about that. Do you provide a post-surgical kit? This is very important. Um, the answer to this one was yes, they provide it, but it's outside of the package of the surgery. So Make sure that when you go to your doctor, you um, consider these costs that might be extra and also ask what they include. In my post-surgical kit, it includes uh, an additional garment, which you can choose either white or black. And then the medications that are not prescribed, but they are highly recommended such as Arnica, um, to mention an example. I also read about uh, panty liners as a substitute for gauzes to put on top of the incisions because they don't stick to the skin. And he actually um, said that that was true and that it was highly recommended. Um, can I continue with my Atkins diet? He definitely said no. Um, I have to have a balanced diet in order for the incisions to heal appropriately. So for now, I had stopped my Atkins diet until further notice. The other question was, what type of prescription medication will I be receiving? And generally, it's only four uh, prescriptions. One, to control the pain. In my case, they prescribe Percocet. The other is an antibiotic and a uh, muscle relaxant. And finally, something for the nausea. Um, you will take it as needed. Is it necessary to use an antibacterial soap? He, uh, because I have a very sensitive skin and he let me know that it was not necessary because the area where the surgery will take place it will always be clean there. What topical ointment should I use over the incisions in order to have a nice healing process? He mentioned to me that it is going to be recommended once the sutures are removed. And he will decide he actually have different types of gels that um, make the process of the healing faster and it looks more appealing. And um, approximately the prices will be 120 to 160 
uh, for the tube. What should I wear under the garment? It's optional, really. They said that it's not needed to wear anything under the garment. Um, I'll, hopefully, I will be able to show you how it looks like once I have it. But um, that he said it was optional. He highly recommended putting uh, the panty liners on, the, um, on top of the incisions just in case it is too sensitive and the garment um, creates a little bit of pressure and that will help with that. The other question I have was, should I get a sports bra? He definitely said no. Uh, he said that the garment will be sufficient until he lets me know that the garment can be removed and I can definitely then go shopping for different um, sports bra. As per my doctor, the first year, um, it is not recommended to use any bra that has underwire. Um, afterwards, then it's okay. Massages in the areas uh, the first month, four to five times a day. And afterwards, at least one time a day, but throughout my the, the stay with the implants. All the questions were so basically those were all my questions uh, for the doctor uh, again I highly recommend for you to do your own research and bring all the questions you have there is no um, stupid question that you can ask everything that you have concerns about bring it to the table that way you'll be at ease at the moment of your surgery. Um, one thing that I've learned through the research, although it is very important to do it on your own, consult everything with your doctor because not everything that is said or everything that you read is accurate. So that is something that you definitely have to have a good conversation with uh, your doctor about. Well, I am on my way to the clinic now and I'll tell you hopefully how everything went and what was the process when I got to the clinic and, um, and when I woke up. Hi everyone, so I got home two hours ago approximately. And I stayed in the recovery room for two hours more. So it's been four hours since the surgery. Um, right now, I am obviously in pain. I just took the pain medication. So hopefully it will kick in soon. Um, one thing to keep in mind, if you have a physical disability, is um, how you're going to go to the restroom. Why? Because I need to be carried. And um, right now, I am trying not to even go or, or hold as much as possible because I'm really scared that when they carry me, they're going to, even if they're careful, I'm going to get hurt and I'm going to have more pain. So um, I knew this was going to happen, but I didn't know how nervous I was going to be uh, after the surgery to use the restroom because of the pain. Uh, the pain is bearable. It feels uh, like a very big pressure on your chest. And I think that the thing that is most uncomfortable, actually, is not the garment. The garment is like a, a, a bra, a, a, gran, a granny bra, but the strap that they put over it, that strap hurts the skin. And it's actually pretty, pretty tight. So every time I try to move or drive my motorized wheelchair, um, it really hurts, I think, more than the surgery itself. Um, I hope that tomorrow I'll be uh, having less pain. And maybe when I take a shower, I can convince my family to put the strap a little bit less tight. Um, to see if that will help out because it really bothers me. Um, hope I'll 
keep you posted, but yes, it is something to keep in mind. I took my motorized wheelchair today just because it's with a joystick. So I thought, well, that would be much better than having the scooter, which you have to move both arms and the upper body all the time, and which was contraindicated for, for my body right now. Um, but even with the joystick, it is painful. And a heads up, if you're traveling with special transportation, just be mindful to schedule it at least half an hour even before the time that they are expecting you. Just because today the bus didn't get here on time and I was running late and that added much more stress to, to all of the process. Um, stress that I actually didn't need. No one needs that. So again, if you're here in Orlando, it's excess lengths. But if you're in New York, if you're doing excess a ride, or if in you're not, um, if you're in another state, definitely plan in advance. And it's better to be earlier than than late. Um, I apologize if my wording is not clear but I'm in a lot of medication I feel like the character shorty on scary movie and saying what's up because everything is going around in circles um, I'm gonna try I put I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna show you I put the headrest on my wheelchair that way I can just put a pillow there and for a while at least for today sleep in the chair that way they don't have to carry me so much um, back and forth to the bathroom, to the bed, to the chair, and I can minimize the, the impact. I'll show you the joystick and the headrest. So this is the headrest I put. So it's still too far back. I will put um, a pillow there to make it comfortable and actually the joystick you cannot see but imagine that I'm just using my pinky to drive it that way I don't have to extend my right arm so much if you have any questions I am planning to do this video um, and post it after I have a couple of them together so feel free to subscribe or um, ask me any questions you wish when I got there, they answered all my questions. They went through the process again just to make sure I was in the same page. Um, what I, I gave them the images that I thought would look nice on me. However, uh, they did some corrections on those images. Like I said before, sometimes you want something that it won't actually look good on you and especially if you don't walk and you're in the wheelchair you have to take that into consideration you don't want breasts that are too large that will look down and and make you even uh fatter a fatter look to your instead of a of a nice silhouette so he was honest with me um the doctor was amazing they guided me through everything they assisted me and um, passing me from my wheelchair to the um, stretcher because my mom couldn't go inside the OR with me. And the anesthesiologist was amazing too and all the nurses. It was fantastic, really. I felt very supportive. Everybody was very excited about me. And one thing that actually caught my attention or that I really like was the comment that they made. I know that I mentioned that in the introduction of uh, my channel, which said um, that they were surprised that a person with a disability such as myself wanted to um, feel nice and, and, and be pretty. And they admired that and they wished that a lot of people just feel comfortable enough in saying, yeah, I'm in the wheelchair, but I still want to look good and I want to wear whatever I want to wear that looks nice. And um, I really like that. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully 
I'll see you tomorrow to see how I'm going with this recovery process. So I just wanted to show you uh, the special garment, which is the, the bra. And this part is the part that I was telling you, the strap that is super tight. I have gauzes uh, placed underneath on both sides so they won't go into the skin. I don't know if you can see it there, but it really hurts um, because it's like cutting into the skin. And unfortunately, I cannot loosen it up until tomorrow. So um, I asked them to put some gauze, and they did. And it's better than before, but still very bothersome. Um, yeah, this is it. That's the other gauze underneath. So the garment itself is pretty comfortable, actually. And it gives you a good support. I don't know how difficult because of my limited mobility is going to be tomorrow to put it back on. I'll let you know how that goes. But yeah, I wanted to show you so when you hear me talking about, heard me talking about the strap, you know exactly what I was uh, referring to. Hi, today is my second day. I just took a shower. Um, it's, it's pretty painful today, I guess, because of all the transferring from the wheelchair to uh, the other chairs and the shower tub and things like that. But um, I survived. And um, if, if you can notice, I still have the marks, but I couldn't scrub uh, that area the doctor didn't want me just to let the water run down and and the soap and I put more gauzes on the garment because it was cutting in my skin unfortunately I cannot um, put a little bit looser the band the doctor called me today to check in and see how I was doing and he said you have to leave it you know very tight so I'm doing what he says. Um, when I took a shower, everything looks fine. Thank goodness everything is healing appropriately as far as I know. Uh, I wanted to show you the box of um, the garment. It's called the Zebra Medical. And... Um, the post-surgical kit brought one extra so I have like I said the white and the black one that makes it easier to change and, and to have it clean interesting enough I know I have to eat well and things like that but the the food I don't know if it's because of the strap being so tight or the muscles being a little bit swollen the pectoral muscles but it, like, I have the sensation that every time I eat, the food gets stuck um, in between my throat and my chest. Like it doesn't go down. And it's a really bad feeling. So I haven't been eating much because it, like, it takes forever to just have the sensation of going down. Even the liquids, um, I feel them getting stuck other than that um, like I said I don't know I'm still on medication I'm trying to take the pain medication every eight hours instead of four to six just because it's a very strong medication and I don't want you know to put my body through through that but if it needed then I will you know go by the four to six hours uh, the last thing I, like I said, I slept on the wheelchair. Remember that my wheelchair tilts and, um, the back, uh, inclines completely, flattens, and the foot rest goes up. Once I feel better, I can show you, um, all the features of the chair. And that has come very handy to me because... Uh, it minimizes the amount of transfers throughout the day. 
I mean, it doesn't replace my bed at all. But for now, until I feel a little bit better, I'd rather have that than, um, yeah, than getting hurt all the time from the transfers. Uh, we'll see how it is tomorrow. I am not looking forward to tomorrow just because I read that the third day is the worst day. So hopefully that's not going to be true to, for me. But we'll see. I'll let you know. Bye. Hi, it's day three, and uh, fortunately it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, the pain is less, thank goodness, and the sensation of the fluids or the food getting like stuck in the throat has lessened a little bit, um, but I still have to take my time to eat because it's still there. Um, Otherwise, I've been doing good, and uh, I still, last night, slept in my wheelchair. I think I'm going to do that one more night, so today, I think it's going to be my last night, hopefully, sleeping in the wheelchair, and then tomorrow, I'll try and transfer to the bed to see how that goes, but um, I'll let you know. Take care. Bye. Hi. It's day four. I am feeling much better today. Less pain, uh, better energy. Um, I can even move a little bit more my arms. And um, the only thing I still have is the sensation of the fluids or the food getting stuck between the throat and the chest. But um, I called today and the nurse told me most likely it was due to the tube extraction sometimes that can happen uh, they can hurt a little bit the tonsils um, hopefully that will go away soon and they said to rinse with water and salt in the morning and before bedtime to alleviate before uh, until they see me on tuesday so um, i'll let you know how it goes for my fifth day tomorrow, today I'm going to try my best to go to bed. So I am looking forward to that. Um, we'll see what happens. I'll let you know. Bye. Hi everyone. Um, it's my fifth day today. I am feeling much better. Uh, I don't have that much pain at all. I barely uh, took today the pain medication. I just took it now because I'm going to take a shower and just in case I get hurt along the way of transferring uh, in case of precaution, you know, but uh, not because I need it really. Um, it just feels like a slight discomfort. Um, I'm happy to say that last night I slept in my bed instead of my wheelchair and uh, it was so much comfortable though um but uh it felt a little bit as a pressure on the chest but just slightly and very briefly then i got used to it and it was fine um obviously i didn't turn to the sides um and when you sit back again after lying flat down you'll feel again that slight pressure but briefly and then it goes away so i guess it just well you get used to to that um foreign object in your body i guess but other than that everything's going according to plan and tomorrow i have my post-op appointment and i'll tell you how everything goes Hi everyone, so today is my sixth day. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, I went to the doctor today for my first post-op appointment and everything um, is healing nicely. Uh, there were no concerns uh, by the doctor, thank goodness. They said to continue wearing the garment, but the strap I can stop wearing it, so I am super happy about it. That caused a lot of pain. Actually, more, more than the surgery itself, that strap for me was the torture device. Um, so I'm happy about that. They uh, said uh, 
that they need to see me in two days um, in order to explain the massages that I would need to have done on a daily basis um, to prevent the implants from not being placed appropriately because of the muscle spasms of, as part of my disability. But other than that, everything is good. Uh, the pain is no longer there. And the discomfort actually is no longer either. I think the strap caused a lot of more the discomfort um, and the pain itself than the surgery. Um, one thing to mention is that they placed the uh, implants of 300 cc's each. And um, I had an implant ID card, which is awesome. I didn't know that they gave you this. And on one side, it says my information, the date of the surgery, the name of the doctor, the amount of uh, gel placed on each side. And um, the other side is the manufacturer information. It says implant ID card. This device is a track device. And the... Um, Manufacturer is Mentor, and it says here that I had been placed two smooth, round, moderate plus profile memory gel implants. So that's the implants I have, and it was worth, um, I guess, sleeping in the wheelchair the first four days after the surgery. I think um, it was worth it just because I diminished the amount of time that would have been spent in transferring from the wheelchair to the bed and back and forth, uh, which could have caused me to get hurt, even if uh, the people that were helping me uh, were very careful. And I think that by itself, helped a lot in now not having any difficulties in terms of healing um, the healing process so I'm happy about that I wanted to see if I can show you I don't have the bed rest right now on the chair but so you can see the wheelchair so it's the joystick when I said that I was moving it with my pinky I was moving it with my pinky the joystick um, imagine that there goes the headrest and the chair by itself has the feature of tilting. So that was what I was doing at nighttime to rest when I was not transferring to the bed. So after tilting, you change the device and you can raise your legs which you'll see, I don't know if you can see it from there, but it actually goes really high. I'm not gonna continue going higher for now. Um, and the head rest, like imagine if I have the head rest, then I will tilt it more, I will put a pillow, and I can go further down almost to actually just flat rest um, like a bed so that's what I did for the first four days I would advise this if is someone like me who is uh, wheelchair bound um, to find a wheelchair or, or rent a chair for a, at least the first week and they can do this just because even if you can transfer on your own using your um, arms and upper body strength you won't be able to do the upper body strength for a while uh, because of the surgery um, the first day I could barely take the spoon up to my mouth um, that's how sore you are and um, 
Therefore, if you have a wheelchair that can assist you and that will feel comfortable, it's better. I mean, um, it's much better uh, for you just to, like I said before, decrease the possibility of getting hurt while doing the transfers. Um, Hi everyone, so today is my seventh day after the surgery. I'm off the pain medication and the muscle relaxant. There is no pain, thank goodness. The only thing that I feel right now is just maybe a little bit of soreness. Uh, if you can compare it to when you go to the gym the next day when you feel sore, that's how it feels right now. The next thing to do will be wait for uh, two days from now so that the nurse can explain to my family how the massages are, have to be done in order for the implants to be placed appropriately. Like I said before, secondary to my muscle spasms and the spasticity I have due to the disability then I would need to have those massages done on a daily basis and I believe it's more than once a day for the first month just to make sure that the implants are um, settled appropriately. Um, other than that, everything is going according to plan. I am very excited. Uh, the only thing I'm wearing is the garment that is for approximately a month as well. And then afterwards, I can receive the heads up to go and, and buy new apparel, new intimate clothing. Let me see if I forget anything else. Oh, the other thing is since I had the surgery recently, um, I am going to travel to visit my family in Puerto Rico. And I am going to be able to go to the beach and swim. However, I am not allowed to wear a normal bathing suit for the first year. Uh, any contact whatsoever that I may have with the sun, I have to wear a special rush guard um, in order to prevent the scars from not healing appropriately because of the UV exposure. So that's the bomber, but okay, fine, a, a year. It's okay with me. Um, I'll deal with that. Uh, and I'll talk to you on Friday to let you know about the information I received from the massages. Okay, bye. Hi everyone, so it's day number 10 from my surgery. And it's been three days since I started officially the massages and received the instruction in my second post-op uh, appointment. The massages, I'll explain briefly. So when I thought about massages, I really thought that they were talking about maybe like moving them around, um, but actually it's not. And you, the, the best way I can describe it is you have to... Uh, pull down a little bit your breast with these two fingers by the way for the record since I cannot do it on my own I need assistance so my family members are helping me with that um, but usually if you are able-bodied then you can do it definitely on your own or if you are in a wheelchair but you don't have spasticity affecting your arms then you can do it on your own as well so you you take the these two fingers, uh, you hold it like that, and you pull down a little bit and inward, and then you lift. Uh, you have to see the implant basically lifting from the skin all the way up to here. So it's almost to the clavicle, and then you release. You hold it there for 10 seconds approximately and release, and then repeat the process uh, 10 times uh, is the set. So is, I mean, one set, 10 repetitions, sorry. And uh, you have to do this for each breath three times a day. The first couple of days, let me tell you, it was 
excruciating the pain um i didn't expect the pain to be that much and i even took the muscle relaxant before doing the massages i took the uh, percocet for the pain and it didn't help so i stopped taking the pain medication if it's not helping with that particular type of pain why am i then you know taking the medication so um today like i said it's been three three days already almost four and i it, it's less the pain i would say that more than pain right now every time uh they help me it's more of a discomfort and you have to like take deep breaths because remember you have incisions there so when you're pulling down and pressing inward before you lift your incisions are tender so um that's also maybe causing the discomfort and the pain and in addition to that in my particular case my spasticity which is not helpful actually um one side is responding better than the other my right side right now um they are looking into it tomorrow they have to see me again to see how i've been doing with the massages because the red the right side is actually pretty pretty hard more than normal and when i do the massages and when they try to do it in the office when they were teaching me it, the implant doesn't even go up so the doctor says that it most likely because of my spasticity and since my right side is actually uh, more spastic than my left then it totally makes sense that that muscle is not wanting to move at all so i hope that tomorrow they don't have to do anything else other than let me know that letting me know that keep going doing the massages but uh the concern i guess for the doctor the last time he saw it saw them was that it could be fluid retention which i'm really really hoping that it wouldn't it won't be um and he will explain if in case it is then they will explain the if if a, another procedure needs to be done or if a drainage tube needs to be put in for a while i'm i'm really not sure otherwise i'm feeling awesome hi everyone so this is the third day after the last appointment that i referred to on my last video what happened during that appointment so fortunately there was no fluid retention on the right side that was still firm um as per the doctor he said that it's still because of the severe spasticity i have on that side and um what follows is to continue doing the massages which by the way i have to tell you we were doing it wrong um when i explained to you the massages the explanation was correct however the amount of effort that or strength that you have to put into the massages was actually like none compared to the correct amount of force you have to put into those massages so once you do it correctly instead of the discomfort that i was referring to on the last video from one being no pain at all to 10 being the worst pain ever you're actually going to experience a nine and a half i have a good um pain tolerance and that's still my number the medications for the pain don't actually cover it and the muscle relaxant either so um it's it's been very painful the process of the massages but they must be done uh in order to prevent the mal uh location of the implant on the breast 
the left side has been recovering appropriately so that it's no problem whatsoever it's just the right side the implant on the right side is now moving slightly but still um, it's not as um, I would say fluid or um, easier to maneuver compared to the left side the other thing that happened during that appointment was that I was informed that the tape from the, the surgical tape used that I had still during that time had to be removed and that the sutures needed to be trimmed. They will eventually be absorbed um, naturally by the skin, but because you still had a little bit of different sutures pointing out, they would need it to be, they needed to be trimmed. So I will explain the process to you of um, taking care of the sutures now that they're actually visible uh, since before, like I said, was covered uh, by the tape, the surgical tape. So the process of removing the surgical tape and trimming the sutures was a little painful, I won't lie to you. Especially, I would say that the most tender areas are to the edge of each incision, especially the outside edge. So on this side here and on this side too. Other than that, the other areas were bearable. It was just a slight discomfort. And when I am being assisted to take care of the wounds of the incisions, those areas that I was referring to, the those corner edges on the outside, I, they still bother. Um, at least they still bother me when, when I'm taking care of them. So the process of taking care of them, there it's plainly simple. So they have this type of tape, so white tape, and they put it on top of the incisions. That's on the first, the, during the first visit um, after they, they trim the incisions. Once you get home, you remove the tape from the incisions. And by the way, this tape was given to me or was included on the post-op kit. So once the tape is removed, you shower regularly. Um, and now you have permission to actually lightly scrub uh, with obviously your hand, not a loofah or anything like that, the areas of the incision so you can remove any excessive tape you have there. And um, then you have to let it dry thoroughly. And if in need you need it, uh, you can use blow dryer on the cool setting to make sure those incisions are dry before you apply the special gel. In my case, the doctor recommended this one, which was not included on the post-op uh, kit. So I had to buy it on that visit three days ago. This is Skin Medica TNS Recovery Complex. It has been used for uh, wrinkles and things like that, but in this case, the doctor recommended it for my wounds. Okay, so this is the box that it comes in. And I will show you the bottle, actually. If I'm not mistaken, it was 160 something dollars. Okay, so this is this, the tube that it, where you have is a red gel and you only need two pumps and that will be sufficient for the entire um, both breast incisions when you place it you have to massage gently in a circular motion to cover all the incisions and let it dry again so first you let it dry from the water um, and then you Put that special gel, you let it dry, and then you actually put the tape back on top of the incisions. Basically, that is the taking care of the wound after the 
surgical tape has been removed and the sutures have been trimmed. The other thing that we discussed in that appointment was if I was able to go to the beach, the pool, or a lake. And the answer, unfortunately, was no. Um, the doctor doesn't want me underwater still. He wants more time for my recovery process, and that's understandable. And um, he still doesn't want me on the Atkins diet. He still wants me to follow just a normal uh, and healthy, uh, well-balanced diet. That includes fruits, veggies, and uh, protein. And the the next appointment will be on um, Tuesday. So that means that is actually three days from now. And today is my 15th day after the surgery. Other, uh, otherwise, I've been doing okay. I've been being able to be carried by my family members without doing the slow and being careful about the transfers. Now they can carry me. It's still, when I hold them in, fr in front of me, they still feel a s slight discomfort because it's, um, my, my chest is being pressed against them in order to be lifted. But it's not too much pain. I have been going outside with them to running some errands and I have to tell you that I've been using my manual wheelchair so they could push me instead of me driving either the motorized wheelchair or the scooter. Just because I am trying to reduce the amount of activity I do with my arms to see if by any chance that will uh, help decrease the spasticity, especially on my right side. In my experience, I haven't noticed too much of a difference, but I'm hoping that when I see the doctor again, he can um, see some difference and, and see that there are some good results from uh, refraining from d different types of activities to see if that uh, spasticity decreases and, and then the muscle will relax and allow the um, implant to m move freely up and down as it's supposed to be doing. Well, hope if you have any questions, please let me know. And I'll see you next time. Bye.